Hey everybody, today we're taking a look at this 200 amp high precision watt meter and power analyzer. Let's get right into it. So we have a user's manual right here. It's gonna talk about all the different information that the power analyzer can display on the screen and what those values mean. It's a simple meter that comes right out of the box. It doesn't come with any connectors pre-wired, but we're gonna look at that here just in a second as we hop out into the garage. All right, so we've made it to the man cave. We're gonna talk about what kind of connectors you might wanna put on here and which one goes on what side. But you can see I have a pretty large assortment of different batteries. These are 4S batteries that I use for FPV drones, like my drone that's right over here, which we can do different testing on. This is a bigger battery right here that I've built. This is a 10S. I built this for my DIY e-bike, right? And then we have a bunch of different chargers. So we're going to look at some of the different connectors that you might want. They're going to make this power meter, right, really viable for you as a testing tool. Now, depending on what you work with, that might dictate what kind of connector you're going to want. I use a lot of XT60s and 90s with mine, so that's where I'm at, but you might use bullet connectors, Anderson Dean connectors. You could even crimp something on here, but most likely I'm gonna go out on a limb and say if you're buying this, that you're a DIY person and that you have soldering skills and you have a solder because that's gonna make the most secure connection. And when it comes from source versus load, so the source might be the battery and we're gonna test how many amps is being pulled off of it, how many amp hours. So most batteries, right, have the female connector on one side. So you're gonna to wanna to have the male connector on this side over here so you can plug it in and then in turn, the female will go back on the other side and this will go to the motors or the ESC controller or whatever. So we're gonna wire that up right now and then we'll talk about some additional things. So not too bad. Okay, so we're gonna put it to the test. I'm gonna hook it up to the e-bike, take the e-bike out for a nice ride, and we'll see what kind of values we get back. All right, so we're gonna take the e-bike out for a nice long ride. We're gonna see what kind of results we get off of this. So the battery is plugged into the source side here. It's reading 41.58 volts, and then that in turn connects to the ESCs and the motor. So we're gonna be able to see what type of amps or what our max amp draw is, watt hours, all of that stuff after we get back. So we just got back from the ride, we did 10 miles. This is at 62% battery capacity at rest. So if we look at the meter here, right voltage is now 38.1 volts. And we started off just short of 42, saying 4.94 amp hours consumed out of the battery. 173.3 watt hours. So this is important because if we look at the watt hours, which is the total actual energy the battery has, we could divide that by the mileage that I went and get an idea in general, like how many watt hours one mile riding my bike in general will consume. So at the end of the day, a power meter is a must have, especially if you're a DIY person, e-bikes, e-skate, drones, or any other application where you need to be able to monitor power consumption and everything else that goes along with it. And if that's something that you're looking for, then this is definitely the thing that you're gonna wanna check out.